Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about how to synchronize a TerraMaster and Acer Store NAS. Now a number of you out there may have already purchased a NAS. NAS has been around for quite a while and maybe you've purchased an Acer Store or a TerraMaster NAS and one for one reason or another you're looking to find out how to transfer your data from one to the other. Perhaps you're doing it because your brand new NAS is a different brand. You've gone for one of the brand new 10 GBE TerraMasters like the F5422 or you've gone for the Nimbus Store 2 or 4 from Acer Store but either way synchronizing data between different NAS is incredibly helpful. For a start you can utilize features such as rsync that allow two NASes to exchange data regularly and on a schedule. Perhaps you want to create a two-stage backup strategy where a primary backup stores a certain amount of data and then a second round of data lives on another NAS somewhere else in the building, over the network or even over the internet. So there are lots of reasons why a number of you would utilize this as a strategy. Now, moving forward, I'm just gonna double check, the screen recording is still carrying on, excellent. I'm going to talk you through both how to back up, uh, sorry, synchronize a Terra Master with an Acer Store NAS and how to um, sync a, a Acer Store NAS with a Terra Master NAS. But there's a few crossing of the T's and the dotting of the I's that you're going to have to do before really getting your teeth into this. From the Terra Master side, you need to make sure you've downloaded and enabled something called Backup. It's a very simple tool in the application section. Once you've enabled it, you have to make sure this first option, rsync server, that you've enabled rsync. rsync is the means, it's remote synchronization, that's allow, that allows NASes to communicate. By default, the port it will recommend is 873, so leave it as that. That is the default port, and if you are only gonna do this once in your operational environment, just stick with that port, because then all the NASes will use the same port when they are communicating, hopefully not at the same time. Next, Add a, a login information, so a username and a password. I've added admin and password. And what that does is ensure that when data has been communicated between them, that there is an authentication password required. And it stops other users taking advantage of remote synchronization options being made available. So make sure you add a username and password and definitely want a little bit more imaginative than what I've gone for. Once you've added these, click apply. Now on the other side, on the Nimbus Store 4 or any Acer Store now is really, head over to the Services option. And in the Services option, just towards the bottom, there's one that says rsync Server. Once again, this box will not be ticked because by default, rsync is disabled. So make sure you enable the rsync Server. You may also notice that the default port is 873, exactly the same. And on top of that, you can ask whether you want encryption to be enabled. If your data is mission critical or particularly private or business led, I recommend you utilize it. But in this case, I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. Next, you have to make sure with regards to backing up modules that you choose the right folders you want involved in the rsync operation. You don't want your entire NAS and, uh, to be involved in the rsync unless you want to back up your whole volume because it can lead to too much data traveling across or effectively just data going where you don't want it. So click add and then you name the um, task that you want to do. I've named mine Acer Store and then from that select the folders that you want to back up. And that's what I've done. Once you've done that, you can see if you want authentication, click finish when you're done, and it will appear here much like mine, where I have got the folder labeled a, uh, public being involved in my synchronization. But that is how you choose the folders that you want to synchronize to and from. So now we've done that on both sides, we can look at how to synchronize it. So how about first, we synchronize data from the TerraMaster to our new Acer store. For that, we go back into the backup application and we go to the second option down. We select create, and this allows us to create a new remote synchronization task. And I'm gonna call this one TerraStore. From here, we have to add the IP of the destination that we're sending data from the TerraMaster to. That is up here and it's known as the IP. Grab this IP but you can also use remote addresses by if you've set up remote access to a NAS over the internet. But that's for another video because I recommend you always perform these operations over the network to begin with as data will be a lot faster and you can get that initial backup done. 
copy and paste the IP into there and ensure that you don't include HTTP S or HTTP colon slash slash. Remove those and make sure you only have the IP. The port should be the same as the default set earlier. And in the username and password section, add the username and password that you created on both of these devices. In my case, it is the word admin and password. Click test and it will commit a test in the background and ping the other NAS just to double check that it's there. If they can't find the NAS or there's a problem, such as putting the wrong password, when you click test, it won't let it operate. So from here, we click next. From here, it will now list all the destination paths that we've selected. And there is the path that we made available when setting up our rsync on the Acer store. So there, there's our destination, public, and the source is where we want the data on the TerraMaster NAS to be pulled from. So we're sending to the public folder on the, on the Acer store, and we're pulling from, in this case, the app data folder on the TerraMaster. But the more folders you have, they'll all appear here. Click Next. Then you can select how and when you want this backup to take place. I would recommend every day early in the morning at some point when everyone's asleep and it doesn't affect anyone's bandwidth but you can select it to be ad hoc so action when you want every day every week or every month click next and from here we can select different options to customize our remote synchronization everything from required authentication and encryption all the way through to the compression of that data in zip folders in real time and whether we want to back up just files and folders or we want to include metadata and small composite data. When you've selected the options that suit you, click complete. And now our remote synchronization is done. And what we're going to do now is we're going to um, pause that with any luck. Oh no, we'll just leave it running there in the background and we'll move over to the Acer store. What if we own an Acer store NAS and we want to synchronize it with a TerraMaster? Nice and simple. What we need to do is this time head over to Backup and Restore. From here, we can make our way into the options and we've already got um, a synchronization that I set up earlier on. So we're gonna delete that and create one from scratch. It, within this option, we go to Create and from the Create option, we select what kind of backup we're running. Now, we are sending from an Acer Store NAS to a non-Acer Store NAS. Consequently, we need to select rsync compatible server. This is where we're selecting the destination of where it's going. In this case, we're sending from this NAS to the rsync compatible server, aka the TerraMaster. We click next, and from here we have to add the server address. And once again, we head up here and we grab that IP. Again, ensuring that if HTTP um, colon slash slash is included that you delete that to make sure there's no problems if it's fine this row will become available and from here we add once again the rsync credentials we created as the means of security between these NASes. if we want to use encrypted transmissions we can but once again only the main account can do that and it will slow down transmission so do bear that in mind clicking next it will now ping the other server to see if everything's fine, which it is, and it's now listed all of the individual folders for, for us to choose to back up. And this is the source folder that we want to back up from. This is the folder on the TerraMaster. For now, I'm going to select the transcoding folder, and this is a folder that has a lot of high-res 4K media that we used in previous videos. We click Next, and now it's pinging the other server for us to select which one of these folders we want to use. I'm going to select app data. Clicking next will now ask us if we want to schedule the task or start it immediately. I'm going to schedule the task and once again, I'm going to do it every day early in the morning. We click next and then we can synchronize the job a little more. We can give it an individual name, create incremental backups, which are stage by stage backups, as well as compress the data as mentioned earlier and change the bandwidth settings to ensure that the synchronization can be controlled if we so choose and ensuring it not taking up the whole bandwidth. If you're a business that's got multiple IP cameras in place, so that's security cameras that use the network, chances are you're going to want to limit the bandwidth use of this backup as it may affect cameras in your environment. And there are other options too. After that, we can click next 
And from here, there's the complete summary of the synchronization we have created. We click finish and it adds the job to the list. And from here, we can start the job, edit the job or find out more about it. Let's start that job now. So now it's starting that synchronization. And on the other side, synchronization has been taking place the whole time. And that's really it. It is that straightforward to back up a TerraMaster NAS to an Acer store or back up an Acer store to a TerraMaster. This system can be utilized to create a two-step backup strategy. And particularly for those people, and I've mentioned it before, that don't use a NAS backup properly, I am talking to you when I say this. If you are using a NAS and backing up a whole host of mobile phones, tablets, MacBooks, laptops, and more to a NAS, and then you delete those files from your phone, tablet, MacBook, and more to make space, you no longer have a backup. What you have is one copy of all of your files on the NAS. That's not a backup. And one of the best ways to back up is to back up a NAS to another NAS over the network. You don't even have to get an expensive one, and they don't have to be the same brand. They don't even have to be the same power. Just a cheap NAS will do. Of course, there's other options like cloud synchronization in USB. But for me, remote sync is probably one of the most rugged, reliable, and controllable backup solutions available to you in your home or business network. But I'm going to wrap things up here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful in your backup strategy or more, click like to let me know you appreciated it and you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more about the world, wonderful world of NAS and click the bell to be notified about relevant content to you so that YouTube will push you the videos that only you care about and not the ones you don't. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.